Hey, I'm Jason, and this is a Jeep Wrangler. JK, more specifically, and this, I mean, and this, I mean, and this, and this is the metal cloak overline fender for the JK. And we're gonna install a set of these on this thing today, and I'm pretty excited. So come along, this should be kind of fun. I'm gonna have to recalibrate my snapper. As you might have noticed from my other videos, I'm the classic cart before the horse kind of guy and already slapped some 37 inch BFGs on this Jeep that still has stock suspension. To pull this off, you have to cut or remove the original fenders or change them completely. I chose to go with the Metal Cloak Overline Fender Kit. They are mega tough and are kind of a fun install. Plus, these are the only fenders that gain you this kind of clearance. You start by pulling off the stock fenders, popping some plastic clips, and removing a few nuts and bolts, saving those for later. I then cut the upper mounting bracket off and touched up the paint. Now, we are ready to install some awesome. Okay, so I did a quick test fit just to kind of get a, a visual on where we're at with this thing. I want you to clamp it up now. Now is when you start lining up holes and marking for drilling new holes. Now what I did was I took the upper bracket that came with the kit and I went ahead and installed it in the spot where it is supposed to live. And then you use the stock inner fender liner bolts to hold that in place. The instructions actually have you just clamp the new fender to the body panel here. But I'm going to take this extra step just because it'll be easier while I'm working on this by myself. And I'll know that this is exactly where this thing's going to want to live. So I'm going to just kind of snug those down. Now what I'm seeing here, let's do a quick test fit, is that this hole needs a little bit of clearance here. And this is what this whole process is. I'm just taking a little bit extra precaution. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that inner fender out and use my tape here just to show me where I need to make a little bit more clearance. And that's just on the bottom of these things right here and right here. And now another recommendation is you can use a marker. This one actually looks really good. You can use a marker but since this is a black car and black Sharpies aren't gonna show up and this, even this red's not gonna show up, this tape is a little cheater way to actually keep your marks here. So, so there we go, we got that. That's our initial fit here. And you don't wanna just drill these holes any bigger. What you wanna do here is <coughs> actually use uh, like a die grinder or some sort of grinder to actually, or file if you wanted to, to actually just clearance the hole in the direction that you need it to go. So let's do that. Always wear your eye protection. Now let's put the bracket back in. See how close we got that. That looks pretty darn good. Carefully, bolt the fender into place and just lightly snug the bolts for now. So now that we have this thing just kind of hung into place here, I'm gonna go around and we're gonna look at the holes that need to get open and, the, and mark the holes that actually need to get drilled here. Use a clamp with some tape on it or a rag to keep everything together and then work your way around the wheel well, marking the spots that will need attention. And don't forget to throw the Frisbee for your dog. Now, let's pull the whole kit and caboodle off of here, drill, grind, and we'll be ready for some install. I just wanted to just take a second to show you what I'm working with here. The instructions that come with this thing are pretty much the best in the business, or one of the best in the business. They're super easy to follow, and you know, as you can see here, I have it on my little handy tab. Like here's, for example, where we're at right now, so they make it super easy. So yes, you could do this at home. And so I'm not even gonna try to pretend that, yes, I'm doing this all on my own by instinct. No, no, I use the destructions on, I mean instructions on this one. It's a good kit. First, center punch your holes and then start with an eighth inch drill bit and work your way up to the 716th final size to keep from tweaking the thin sheet metal. 
Now I've been buzzing through the holes, everything's going great. Now there are two holes back here that have to actually transfer into this inner piece of sheet metal. For back here, they give you these little standoffs. Now these standoffs here are actually the things that you would bolt through to actually just add the strength to this inner, to this flimsy little piece of metal here and, and, it, and it ties it into here. Simply use this standoff as a drill guide and step the hole sizes up like before. An option at the rear of the fender mount is to use the stock 10 millimeter bolt or drill it out to accept a beefy 3 16 from the kit. I drilled that sucker. Okay, so we have our holes drilled in what we think is the right location. Pretty sure we do. Instructions make it pretty bulletproof. Now, we have all this exposed metal, metal where we just ground and drilled, so they recommend that you paint all that stuff so that you can avoid having some you know, rust or corrosion later. Now, there's a bunch of ways to do it. I just choose to get these little enamel paint pens that you can get at like Pet Boys or whatever. They're like touch-up pens, or I used them for RC cars and things like that, so, or modeling. And I'm just gonna go ahead and all the bare metal, I'm gonna put black paint on it. Now, the other cool thing about these pens is that if you go to your dealer, you could actually get these things in the color of your car. So that would be very handy for you while you do this. So you would have the exact color of your rig. So that way later on down the road when you get some rock chips in your junk, you can actually use these pens to help touch it up. Okay, so let's get the upper bracket back in place and mounted. Oh, look at that, it mounts up. It matches up pretty good. And that's a great thing. So let's go ahead and get the screws started for this thing. Now remember, we don't tighten these up until we get everything in. Okay, let's hoist this thing into place and see what we got. So now, I'm gonna be a little bit more careful because I don't wanna scratch anything up. So we'll start right here in the middle. I'm gonna use the short ones that buzz right through here. Okay, now that we have that started, it looks, quick glance is it looks pretty darn good. Holy mackerel. Now it's time to get this bottom one in place. And since I'm not running the metal cloak rocker or exo skins yet. Um, I'm gonna go ahead, they recommend that you just put a few shims in here, a few washers in to take up the place that would go in there. So I'll throw a few washers in there. Throw the bolt in. Throw another washer on the back. All right, so now, Throw in our trick little inner fender panel here. Get the bolt lined right through there. Now it's just a matter of tightening the hardware. I started from the rear and worked my way to the front. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the hole drilled for this final bracket. We'll paint that as best we can. Get some paint all inside there. To get to the back of that thing, they say that it's probably easiest to just take off the turn signal. So let's do that. So it's a quarter turn on the bulb there. Light bulb down. Then there's just two tabs inside there. One, two. Now the cool trick that the instructions show you is to just put a little bit of tape there, put your nut right inside there, like that. We get our bolt and washer that will go through there, just like that. Then you just stick 
your wrench with your with your pre-installed nut on there right inside the hole and then let's just tighten that sucker down and we just wiggle our tape installer off of there pretty cool little trick there and i'm going to go ahead and just tuck this in here so i don't break that and there you go the mounting point the fender mounting is in place now for the grand finale for the front it's the flare and these bolt on with just these two stainless bolts and make sure that you have some anti-seize inside there because you have stainless here and mild steel here so that might gall so you just make sure you have some anti-seize on there and you put the front one on and then the back one takes a little bit of a tweak to get on because they have a bit of a preload on them there we go come back up chase this front one all right ready all right good snag well, that's it for the uh, heavy lifting on the front fender install. These things are awesome. They seem like they are pretty much bulletproof. Now, what we're gonna try to do is get the inner fender installed before this rain comes. Now, what these are, these are the Metal Cloak aluminum inner fender panel upgrades for these things, and they just look awesome. And look how they kind of contoured a lot of stuff to give you all that maximum protection and clearance in there. All right, so we're gonna tackle the passenger side first because it's actually the only one that requires a little bit of, uh, um, I guess, tweaking right here. Because we're gonna move these two wiring harnesses here. We're gonna move these up and out of the way because it tucks all the way up in here to give you maximum clearance, which is pretty cool. So what I wanna do, and it's really clear in the instructions what you're supposed to do. So what you're gonna do is when you move these, you're gonna tuck this so tight that it's actually gonna go up. You're gonna to wanna to run the cable or this big wire bundle up through here. So I'm gonna draw, give myself a little target on this honeycomb thing here because they want us to go right here and that's what we'll do. So the instructions say use some tin snips and just cut that plastic there and that's a great suggestion. Now what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna go ahead and use a, a die grinder with a bit and just kind of make a nice oval port there. And that's just because I have that tool. And you know, I guess what you'd want to make sure is you're not gonna accidentally buzz into one of your uh, cable looms here. That would be a bad thing. So let's actually go ahead and make that clearance. Now it's just a matter of popping these things off. It's just a little plastic clip here. And that comes off that easy. So you get these up in this little nook here, like that. And then the kit comes with a bunch of zip ties. And so I'll just zip tie these all up out of the way and in this nook. All right, now that we got our wires secured and a little route for them to go, let's install the inner panel here. Boy, that fits pretty good. Secure the panel with a stock mounting nut and the bolts that go through the aluminum inner fender well skirt we installed earlier where the standoffs would normally go. One of the cool things that they say about this kit is that it creates much more flow through your engine compartment so you can actually cool down your engine running this, these inner fender wells because it lets more air out and that's kind of a cool feature in case you don't want to spend a ton on one of those venting hoods so there you go let's get this one on okay so here's the front splash shield and it mounts right here to these two upper bolts now what you can do is you can either mount it like this and then you have to drill this little hole down here. So I'm just gonna mark it where I want it here. Pull this out. So let's center punch that hole. All 
right, like that. Let's get this drilled. Don't forget to paint any exposed metal. So I'm using my paint pen here. There we go. Let's get our panel here. Use the stock upper bolts and the new 3 16 bolt at the front to hold it into place and just tighten it down. That is a really nice way to finish this install off. And boom, final install on these things. Look at that. That looks pretty darn good. Let's check it out. This whole kit looks fantastic, tough and functional, like it belongs on there. I was worried that I would miss the unique look of the Jeep with no fenders, but one glance at these overline fenders solved that. The aluminum inner panels are a real plus when you show off so much wheel well. So there it is. That's the install of the Metal Cloak Overline front fenders for the JK. That was actually a pretty fun day. And look what we did to this thing. You're not doing that with your stock fenders. So check out the next video where we put the rears on. And I also got some bump stops for this thing. And then after that, I'm going to take it out in the hills again, see where we're at, and then see what the next thing is to do. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and keep checking back for more videos as we keep building up on this thing. And don't worry, there's some Mustang build up videos coming as well. Till next time, enjoy your drive.